am from a poor village. I am a widow with four children. I had to learn to obtain what they needed. My husband is a fisherman. We depend on the sea for our livelihood. I help him by selling the fish. We have the problem of water. At times we must travel many kilometers in the mountains to get it. Without water there is no life. Looking at India through the eyes of women gives us the opportunity of entering into this vast nation with a rich perspective and it especially gives us the possibility of seeing how important their contribution is for the growth of this country. India is the largest democracy in the world and it has the second highest population. Its citizens speak Hindi, English and at least 16 other official languages. Hinduism is among the traditional religions as are Islam and others. India has a great cultural influence with its rapidly growing economy and the most prolific film industry in the world. Bollywood. However, the large population that lives in the countryside continues to become more and more impoverished. Despite its economic wealth, India results as one of the countries where the population suffers the most from hunger and malnutrition. Among the causes of this poverty is the social burden of slavery, of which Mahatma Gandhi spoke. It is the slavery of the lowest caste, called the untouchables, and that of women. Even though the National Constitution of India banned caste discrimination in 1950, the nation continues to be influenced by this ancient system that assigns a place to each person in the social hierarchy based on the family into which one is born. Women particularly suffer a dual discrimination. The activist movements condemn the injustice that women still suffer, even though India has had many women in powerful positions. There is a strong correlation between the literacy of women and health indicators. A UNESCO report states that India is one of the five countries with the lowest rate of literacy among women. 50% do not know how to read and write. Throughout India, the daughters of Mary Help of Christians have chosen to alleviate poverty and promote literacy through a campaign in which women acquire the basic skills to make their lives more sustainable. They have chosen women as their target because they are the asset to lessen poverty and improve the standard of life for the family. In the southwest of India, we find the state of Karnataka, with its capital at Bangalore. It was once called the Garden City because of the many trees and parks that flourish thanks to its healthy and temperate climate. It is the third most populous city of India and it is known as the Silicon Valley of the East because of the presence of many high-tech multinationals that have their Asian central headquarters there. The information technology industry, however, prospers at the cost of the rural population. Only 28% of Bangalore is urban, and the greater part of its population lives on agriculture. In the Bangalore province, the FMA are working for the empowerment and transformation of the lives of women and children the poorest part of the population. Through the promotion of self-awareness and social participation, instruction, cultural formation, economic formation and health assistance. 
Seeing the poor and miserable conditions of women, youth and children in the various states of India, especially Karnataka, Andhra and Kerala, in the slums and in the villages, we have seen, we have started this NGO called Center for Development and Empowerment of Women to empower them in various aspects through its various interventions and activities. CTEW has five strategies. Empowerment through organization, education, economic self-sufficiency, holistic health, and the capacity for decision-making. I was sent around to see the various needs of the people. As I conversed with the women of the various uh, states, they expressed a great need for various things like drinking water. And I have also seen how do they suffer due to lack of water and how people travel whole night over hill and valley to collect water. Mr. G. Tinti Matthew is an assistant formator responsible for the video documentation. He conducts awareness courses and training programs for women and children. The greatest problems that he has encountered were those dealing with HIV, AIDS and alcoholism. CDEW is spread throughout 30 centers in the three Indian states of the South Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Kerala. It occupies itself with children, young people and women in the most marginalized castes. Ongole is located at approximately 500 kilometers from Bangalore. It is an old textile center in the state of Andhra Pradesh. It is among the most highly populated areas where the daughters of Mary Helper Christians carry out their social apostolate among the slum inhabitants. People belonging to the poorest tribes live in little huts with straw roofs in swampy lands, besides landfills where there is no running water, electricity or other basic services. They live by begging, palmistry and fortune telling, selling rags and stealing. Frequently the children are deprived of the right to study and are forced to gather rags or to work as servants to help their families. Extreme poverty is the reason why the level of literacy in these slums does not even reach 40%. Through their self-help groups, the Daughters of Mary Helper Christians have begun formation courses for self-awareness programs, savings, economy and micro-credit work. The member of the self-help groups meet every week and place their savings in a common fund, carry out various social activities in their villages and participate in all common programs. The back to school program for children began to offer the possibility for them to return to their studies. This allows them to enter into the regular school program. 50 children have been able to begin again at the St. Joseph's Telugu Medium Primary School administered by the Daughters of Mary Help of Christians and to attend the St. Teresa Middle School administered by the parish. During the year, many illiterate women have been able to receive instruction through the Adult Literacy Program of the Centre. At the beginning, when I visited the Buddha Bukala slum, the elders of the area did not welcome me cordially and told me not to do anything for the women. However, after having explained to them the different benefits that their women would have received, they willingly cooperated. My name is Mala Kashmi. My parents arranged my marriage. My husband had a brick-making oven. One day, he saw a man abusing the child workers and he intervened. 
the other person in a fit of rage, beat my husband to death. We had four children, three girls and a boy. At that time, the youngest was only six months old. When my husband was alive, I almost never left the house, not even to go shopping. A few of my neighbors had advised me to sell the oven and buy buffalo to earn a living. Rani had invited me to join the self-help group so as to be able to put some money aside and to then take out a loan from the group and the bank. I learned many things from the group. I learned to trust myself and I began to appreciate the value of hard work. After six months, I took out my first loan from the group and bought a buffalo. I could send my four children to school. Since, however, study became more expensive, I had to withdraw my older children and send one to learn the trade of dressmaking at the Auxilium Centre School. And I took the other with me to gather grass for the buffalo. With the three buffalo, I was able to have a regular income and now had the possibility of successfully caring for my family. I can say that the group helped me to grow in dignity and to work without having to depend on others. My name is Suguna. I have been married for 25 years, but I have not had the blessing of children. All of my neighbors and my mother-in-law cursed me as I was a sterile woman. My husband worked in a business as an accountant and I was a housewife. I was deeply demoralized. One day, one of the sisters of the Women's Development Center, Auxilium Akila Vikas, together with one of the community organizers, Mrs. Rani, came to visit my family and advised me to become part of the Laxmi self-help group. They encouraged me to set up a little shop. I took out a loan and bought rice from a wholesale company to sell at retail from my house. After having reimbursed my first loan, I took out another and thus I could enlarge my shop. Now, through hard work, I have become aware of my inner potential and have built good relationships with my neighbors. Though I am no longer young, I have decided to adopt a little girl, even though my husband and many of my neighbors have criticized me for this decision. I answered them saying that every day with the sale of a few packages of rice, I would be able to raise a child. I named my little girl Sri Hazavadini. Gradually my husband gave in and now he too is happy to have a child. I am pleased that my wife is part of the self-help group of the Auxilium Center and that she participates in the programs that the sisters offer to women. I had encouraged her because the lives of women must also change for the better. I understood that as a family member, I, too, receive benefits. Even though we are Hindu, I do not impede her from taking part in a Christian organization. As the women gradually gained awareness of their potential, the male mentality toward them is giving way to an attitude of reciprocity. As a man, uh, I had a, a different outlook towards women. I used to think that they need to be confined to the four walls of the house. They, they have to look after their children and uh, they have to do the cooking and uh, nothing more. But now I have a great mentality change. I really understood that women have to come out of their homes. They are not, uh, they are not subhuman. They are equal to men. Putiyatura, another place where the FMA carry out their work for the advancement of women, is 900 kilometers from Angola. It is a densely populated coastal village in the Trivandrum district in the state of Kerala. It is one of the poorest and most backward states in Asia and is inhabited by traditional fishermen who live on the beach. Stop. 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 
The most important thing that the women have learned is to save money. We were poor families. We lived in little huts with straw-covered roofs. But now we live in better houses with equipment, protection, and we have a better financial status. The Mala Davidson story is a typical one. My father was a fisherman, and when he did not go to fish, we children had nothing to eat. He got drunk, and my mother had to go to sell the fish in order to earn what was necessary for food and for our education. Seeing her work, I left school and went to the fish market with her. Vimala later married, but her husband was also an alcoholic. It was difficult for her to care for the children on her own. She joined a self-help group in 2003, and she succeeded in setting aside 20 rupees a week until she had accumulated 7,000. She was able to get a loan from the group to repair the house, to make purchases, and to send her children to school. The group helped her to change her horizons, to trust in herself. Among the women there is sharing and reciprocal help. Traditionally, the people of the fishing communities have great trust in God because they struggle against the dangers of the sea. The old habits of traditional faith are still practiced. When the greater part of the men go to sea before 5.30 a.m., the church is crowded with women and children. Kanakakuno is a mountainous village in the state of Kerala. Because of its natural beauty, it seems to be like the Garden of Eden. 
During recent years of climate change, however, the economy that is based on agriculture is passing through a critical period. Approximately 85% of the rain falls during the monsoon season that punctuates the rhythm of life for the whole region. The survival of the people depends on its regularity. The problem of water means that the women must travel many kilometers through the mountains to draw it. opened the Centre for the Development of Women in 2003. They offer regular visits to the families, awareness programmes and meetings with individuals. FMA and the community organizers have gradually accompanied the people to rediscover courage and hope in life. During these years, the area had developed much, thanks to the construction of more than 500 reservoirs that gather rainwater and to the work of the self-help groups, where the women have been able to empower their leadership, informing themselves and learning many ways to invest their savings in microeconomics, so as to be able to cross the threshold of poverty. I, being the director of the social work in the Diocese of Idiki, thank the Salation Sisters for their interference in this particular area. This area was notorious for suicide. Many people used to commit suicide and this is an agrarian sector, people are mainly depending on agriculture and uh, because of financial crisis, that is the main reason, because of financial crisis they try to commit suicide. So it was our duty to support the families, to help them to earn their livelihood to propose some income generation programs and we were sure that will help the people to, to continue their life and uh, to earn their livelihood for the family. The CDEW supports the raising of rabbits in collaboration with the diocese that buys live rabbits at a fair market price and after having processed them, sells them at a good price. This activity is giving work to approximately 1,000 families at a steady income between 1,500 and 2,500 rupees. I had to face much suffering, dishonor and financial loss because of an alcoholic husband. I was desperate and felt a sense of absolute impotence. 
When the sisters opened a center for development, I became a member of the self-help group. In the course of time, I took out a loan so that I could raise cows and rabbits. The sisters arranged for my children to study in good schools and gave financial support for their expenses. I felt that my children were avoiding me and refused to speak to me. I had experienced their rejection and therefore I thought about doing something about my alcoholism. I became aware that my children were growing up, they were going to school and that my behaviour was certainly not good for their future. The support of prayer from the group and the continual accompaniment of the sisters helped me to change my life and to end my dependence on alcohol. I am now a member of the Alcoholics Anonymous group begun by the sisters. In the Indian province of Bangalore, the daughters of Mary Help of Christians are giving a sense of dignity and self-awareness to women. Today, women are liberated. I could say, today, women are liberated. I firmly believe that the salvation of India depends on the self-sacrifice and emancipation of its women. <laughs>